finally things are starting to roll in. It's still very slow, but this is the first really, really interesting product that I've been working on. And it's interesting mainly because of where it came from. So this is the FPV Cycle 2203. It comes in 3450 kV. It will also come in 3000 kV, which haven't received those motors yet. The 3000 kV is really intended for 5 inch and those people that want to run higher S numbers on 5 inch. But the 3450 is really going to be the base motor, and I, this is the one I really recommend across all the uses of this motor. Something really special about this particular size motor, 22 is not a special size, 2203 is not even a special size, it's just a little bit shorter than the typical 2204 that was kind of the standard forever ago. This motor has a 12 by 12 M2 mounting platform, and so it's really designed for things that are a little bit smaller. And as we have learned through the years, uh, we like bigger and bigger motors, so this is a very appropriate progression for motors. But let's first talk about, before going any further, let's talk about the platforms it's really intended to be used for and what this motor is really designed for, what it was originally designed for. So a while ago, I started testing Cinewhoops and doing the slow flying thing. I was never really a big fan of Cinewhoops, Cinewhoops like this, because they have these ducts and these ducts if you've flown anything with ducts you know that they make things fly really really wonky so my goal with this motor was really to this is an earlier prototype we the goal of this motor was really to try and improve the flight performance of the cine whoop and so that's what it was originally designed for it's designed for a three inch prop running inside a duct with 3S, 4S, whatever S you want to throw on it, with a GoPro on top or whatever you want on top, maybe you're using an exploded GoPro, whatever you're using, like 500 plus grams all up weight, that's what this motor was really designed for. It was also intended for four inch because four inch has kind of all the same requirements. It needs to have a good amount of power, good amount of performance. And so this is the power pick four inch. Uh, this one is not quite available yet on FPV cycle, but the, <laughs> 5-inch version is. It's just funny that they decided to cut the 5-inch version first. Anyways, the canopy that you see on top of this thing, it's. I just kind of added it because I don't like flying anything without any protection at all. I like some protection at least. And so this one, this can't, it's really ugly. I'm sorry. I just put it on there just to throw something on there to kind of get you started. There just weren't any canopies that met my requirements. And so this canopy is probably going to be replaced in the future with something. But if you just build the frame without the canopy, it has the same kind of uh, interlocking pattern as the toothpicks in the middle here. So it's got five screws total. If you just take the canopy off, it's about 28 grams. This frame is, this is the five inch version. It has 1.5 millimeter body plates and three millimeter arms. It's not designed to be super duper light. It's not super duper light, but it, it's pretty decent weight. And it's designed to be a little bit more sturdy than something that might be super duper light in this category because even, even we don't like flying stuff that's just so fragile you don't want to fly it. Uh, other than these two, this is the 4-Ride in 5-inch. And this is not available on FPV Cycle yet. Still in process of being cut, but what you'll notice is that these motors, these are the original prototype motors, well actually almost final motors, these are 3600 kV motors. And another thing I want to point out is that the primary electronic stack is their toothpick boards. They're whoop boards. They're just high-powered whoop boards. This is the <laughs> this is the thirty-seven dollar thirty amp four S toothpick board from that weird company JHE MCU, which nobody really knows, but they've been making lots of electronics. And like me and a couple of the people have been totally hammering this thing. It's kind of proven itself. Uh, it's it's just so cheap that it's hard to believe that it's as good as it is, but uh, I mean, it, that's what's in this. It's on 4S, full-blown, 3600 KV, 2203, 5-inch props, the Gem 5 5125, which is a perfect prop for this motor. I hope they make a twin blade version. That would be even better, but this is like the perfect prop for this motor. This setup is really surprisingly nice. It's a really lightweight frame, and overall, uh, I would so far recommend this board. I don't know how it's going to do in volume, but for now I'm really thrilled about it. So thanks to that company for making this board. Anyways, let's get back to talking about the actual motor. So the motor construction is of the highest available components that are available to us today. That's going to be the 7075 aluminum, the 0.15 millimeter laminations, 280 degrees or 260 degrees uh, windings. I forget all the specs. 
Um, it has a steel ring on the outside instead of a unibody aluminum bell. That's to save weight and also to save cost because it's kind of unnecessary and it's now a design feature since it's got a black top and a white ring. The um, magnets are 1.8 millimeter thick. It has a magnet lip under the bell here so they don't slip and they are curved, very strong magnets and whatever you want to call them. It doesn't really matter. They're arbitrary numbers. The shaft is titanium, 8 millimeter bearing, the Japanese bearings. It has a titanium prop shaft on top with a flangeless full wall height lock nut on top, specifically flangeless full wall height, because if you look at the gem fan prop here, the 75 millimeter ducted prop, which is the prop that runs really fantastic on this motor, uh, the flanged one just barely doesn't really fit on top. So having the flangeless and not having a low profile nut on top makes it great because the low profile nuts are a pain to get a grip on to be able to tighten and untighten. So that's why that's like that. There will be a T-mount version, just hasn't gotten here yet, but uh, I prefer this one. The T-mount version has a very specific use, but a lot of people might want to use it for five inch and whatnot or super duper light things. The motor weighs 16.8-ish grams without any wire on it, but with this 150 some odd length wire, comes in at about 20, 20.5 grams or so. So it's somewhere in that, that weight range of 17, let's say 17 to 20 grams, depending on the wire length that you have on here. And that's a really nice weight. And while that may seem like a lot of weight for a very, very, very light five inch, um, it is of my opinion that I'd rather not sacrifice motor size and weight for the sake of just having a lighter quad because what's the point if you don't have really good control? Like you, there's no point in less weight if you just don't have the performance that you want. So that's about this motor. There are, I mean, I can go on and on about this particular motor and why it is the way it is. The reason why it's it's even wider is I, I, I tried every motor I could possibly find for Cinewhoops trying to improve the performance. And the only reason why I even went back to ducts, I hate ducts. I originally absolutely despised ducts. But then I started talking to Stan FPV, Stan, and he has been working on designing ducts for quite some time now, and he's actually improved the duct performance quite a surprising bit. And this duct is specifically designed for the Cinespore. The Cinespore is available on FPV Cycle already, and um, this duct is a drastic improvement. The reason why it even had, it, the reason why I even got here is because when I started looking at Cinewhoop frames, I came across the Cloud 149, which is probably the most popular Cinewhoop frame in, in existence. I mean, that thing is crazy popular. But this is the duct that they made for that, and this is a molded piece of plastic. It's like ABS plastic. It's really strong. It's like 10.9 grams with these little brass inserts, and the way it mounts is by screwing directly onto the carbon arm of the frame. And so this is the Cinesplore, and it has been designed... It, it's not that special of a design. I just designed it because it does the... the um, the Cloud 149 did not fit the electronics and components and everything the way I wanted it to. And this is the, this has all separate arms. I don't like unibody frames and it's still pretty light. And it has two platforms on here, one for the toothpick board or the whoop board and one for the, um, for your Vista or any kind of analog video that you might be running. And so the arm mounting, as you can see here, has those three holes here. And this is a really surprisingly solid mount. And that's why I really adopted this duct. That's why I, I made it kind of the default duct for the Cinesplore with the option of running the Stan FPV ducts. Now, these ducts do improve the performance quite a bit, but most of the Cinewhoop performance improvement from the typical wonky Cinewhoop that has really poor throttle control, poor altitude control, really poor control in general, has like crazy washout if you try to do anything with it, the motors are going to improve that a lot. So by running this motor instead of your typical 1506, 1507, 1508, 1606, 1608, 1607, whatever motor that you know of out there that you're running right now, this is an improvement on that. At this point in time, the pandemic of 2020, this motor is an improvement on those other things. And one of the major ways, this is not the video that I'm going to discuss kind of the motor performance and the design and everything about motors because I have been doing a lot of research and work in that area. But one of the main ways that this motor is a very nice improvement on those motors is that it, while it, it's very short, very, very flat, and very wide, it has very low overall stator uh, volume 
but it also has a very wide stature and very good surface area to the stator and so you get really good cooling on this motor so the magnets stay cool and everything performs nicely and it also stays performing more efficiently because it's nice and cool the windings are cool everything is not getting super hot i mean the motor does get warm still i mean depending on what application you run it on but we're not talking about like huge differences in temperature but it's enough to improve the performance of the motor to the point where you do get a little bit more efficiency out of this motor the added extra weight of maybe like a gram or so over like a 1608 which is probably going to become a popular size down the road because i know of a bunch of motors coming out there's actually a 1609 also uh it's it's not an issue i mean the the, the cinewolf is like 550 grams already so one gram of motor is really a non-issue uh, but like i said i prefer having an extra gram of motor if it's going to give me really good performance and really good control uh anyways other things I should talk about is that this motor, while it will pretty drastically improve the flight performance of any Cinewhoop you throw it on in the three inch size class of, you know, this like heavyweight stature, it doesn't fix washout entirely. It doesn't fix your acrobatic ability entirely. It, you are still limited to a craft that weighs way too much for the size of prop. And it's just, it's just not going to perform the way you, you would love it to perform. It's not an acrobatic machine, but that's also not what it's intended to do. And so the video at the beginning may have seemed pretty typical, docile video of you know, just slowly flying around. But anybody that's done a lot of cine whooping would know that it takes kind of a, a good amount of effort to get things to run appropriately and get things right so that it could actually perform the way you want it to. Now, this video, again, is not intended to be about the Cinespore or whatnot, but this duct from Stan FPV, it improves, while the motor improves most of the performance, this duct, it improves a little bit of efficiency, even though it weighs another like 0.8 grams more than the, uh, than the, than the basic duct, the Cinespore, the um, Cloud 149 duct. It also improves throttle performance a, a little bit as well. So it's even better at maintaining your altitude and giving you really good feedback on what your throttle performance like is like. It helps improve the control as well. It's also a shorter duct, so you can use 25 millimeter standoffs instead of 30, 30 millimeter standoffs. And that will make it, make the whole frame, the Cinespore frame, kind of like shorter and tighter weight density. So that'll improve as well. And overall it performs a lot better, but most importantly over everything else to me, it makes the quad sound more like a little handheld vacuum rather than your typical chainsaw massacre <laughs> quad flying around. That's really nice for people if you're flying around people. Now, it's not quiet by any standards at all, but the quality of the sound is different and it is nicer to hear rather than the crazy loud things that we're used to when we're flying Cinewhoop things. So, um, that's it for this video. This video was really supposed to be just a short video about the motor, but take care, floss your teeth. Thanks. Bye.